Good morning, Northgate and friends. Happy June 28th, this Sunday. Let's pray and we'll get into God's word this morning. Thank you, Lord. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would speak to our hearts. May your word come alive. Lord, we desire to hear what you want us to hear. So God, be in this time. We pray in your precious name. Amen. So we're in the book of 1 Corinthians. Uh, we finished chapter 6, but before going on to chapter 7, I thought we would just circle back to one verse in chapter 4 and one verse in chapter 5. It seems that they're contradictory, but I felt the Lord wanted me to explain them. I think he explained them to me, and hopefully it will be a help to you as well. But in chapter 4, verse 5, it says this, Therefore, judge nothing before the time, until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the hearts. Then each one's praise will come from God. So important to know the context, Paul, uh, here with the Corinthian church. We've talked about it for weeks. Planted the church, loves the church, writing a letter back to the church to uh, speak into their lives in a few matters, but it seems that there are some in the church that are judging him. He says in verse 3 of chapter 4, but with me it's a very small thing that I should be judged by you. So some in the church are obviously judging him, which leads him to this verse, well listen, only Jesus is the judge, and he will judge when he comes, and he'll bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. Now, I want to see a difference in chapter 5, where it says in verse 12, For what have I to do with judging those who also who are on the outside, do you not judge those who are on the inside? So here Paul almost saying, yeah, there is some judgment that's needed in the church. So he starts in chapter 4. It's not our job to judge. God will judge when he comes. And then in chapter 5 he says, well, no, don't judge the world, but we need to judge people in the church. So what is it? And we call this attention in scripture and it's important that you see why you're both there and then they can make sense because the Holy Spirit is ministering into two different things. First, I want to point out in chapter 4 that it seems Paul is talking about hidden things, not obvious things, not actions, but things of the heart, motives, ambitions. And in the Corinthian church, hey Paul, why are you doing this? And Paul answers them in the rest of the chapter and in chapter 5, and then he answers them all the way in 2 Corinthians. Hey guys, I love you. I never tried to take advantage of you. My heart is good. But for some reason, they're judging things they can't see. Where Paul says Jesus will reveal those things, it's not our job to measure them now. When you go into chapter 5, judging the inside, that verse, it seems very clearly in the context of the beginning of chapter 5, he's speaking of unrepentant, visible sin. So I'm going to choose to engage in a sin and say it's not wrong. Then we as a church have a responsibility gently and in love to say, don't go that way. I don't want to talk about that too much because we did speak of that a couple weeks ago in relational discipleship and how true discipleship encourages and exhorts and challenges when we're going the wrong way. But the first thing I want to do is, yeah, confess. I've definitely failed, according to chapter 4, in judging people. And we know in Jesus, Matthew 7, 7, do not be judged lest you be judged. The idea of trying to get the speck out of someone's eye, uh, but there's a plank in your own eye. And we need to deal with that in regards to heart motives. But I find when we do that, when that rises up in me, and I pray it gets less and less, 
what it is. It's a, what is this? A red flag that there's a deeper problem in my life. If I'm looking at someone else and trying to elevate myself or say they didn't do this or they're thinking this, what I'm trying to do is to elevate myself, which shows me there's a flag that I don't understand my value in Christ, that I am struggling with understanding his grace. I'm struggling, so then I compare and say, well, I am better than that person, or my motives are better. And really, I'm doing that to find value in me doing the right thing or having the right motive. And that is not good. It's not good because it destroys lives for the sake of you trying to feel better about yourself spiritually. But the trail of disaster is real in how we make people feel. And we see this, by the way, all through the New Testament. There's a judgment of others. Just a couple examples. I see Peter when Christ said they would all deny him in Matthew chapter 26. And Peter said, they'll deny you, maybe them, but I never will. Why is he casting that judgment upon them when we know that they all will fail? And actually, Peter would have the greatest denial. But in that statement, what he's saying is, oh, my heart is okay. I will follow you to the end. But they, but them, judging them, I don't know about them. Now we do this in our churches all the time to feel better about ourselves and unfortunately it happens church to church oh we do worship like this or we teach the secondary truth we 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 got it down with the end times and well, i don't know about them over there now that's a mystery i chose that because that's not a black and white thing in scripture but the things that are uh, a mystery are what churches fight fight about secondary truth about the holy spirit or end times or different things like that. And then we say, hey, look, we've got it. They don't. Why do we do that? Because we're trying to feel better about what we're doing to value ourselves more. Oh, we worship with their hands up. No, I don't like the music. I put my hands down. I don't like their music. I like their music. Hey, you might or might not, but you're not called to judge someone else. That's not what scripture would have for us. That's God's job to reveal the counsels of the heart. Oh, they have fast music because they're emotional and this or that. Or they have slow music because they're not emotional and that's not good. And either way, there's a judgment going across that we have no idea what's in the heart and it's not our job to judge. Now, not only that, but in little rules, secondary rules, and there are people out there who think they have a handle on all truth, and they push that into gray areas, and that's seen in the book of Galatians, and they don't understand God's grace, and they're trying to live with their value in the law, so they're saying, oh, you need to be, to them it was circumcised, or he goes on in the end of the book, you need to obey days and seasons. Oh, in Romans 13, you need to obey the idea of eating foods not sacrificed from idols or whatever that looks like. And Paul would then say, if we are judging and not secure in grace, we are the weaker believer. And there's no place for that. And as a strong believer in grace, we give grace and we don't judge other people. And that's the message of chapter 4. Because God will come and give each one his praise. But that's not our job, and the consequences are pretty drastic. And I know in my life, I've hurt so many people from putting a judgment on a secondary thing or a hidden thing that God hasn't asked me to do. I know I've been hurt by people who have judged me for a secondary truth they believe and I don't believe. And I can remember times in my life where people say, oh, there's so much fruit in your life, but, but you're off on this secondary truth. And I learned, I probably received that because I gave that, and that's not the way to live.
And we want to encourage each other today to live in the truth of God's work, His gospel, not our work, and then not judge people on work, but on the truth of His grace, and always directing people to Him. So where does this second verse come in? In chapter 5, where it says we're to judge the church. And here, as I mentioned uh, before, there are things that aren't hidden, but are very obvious. Obvious things in love and gentleness need to be addressed. I was a referee. Yeah, I enjoyed that time in New Jersey. It was extra income for my family. So I'd go on Saturday mornings in the winter and I'd ref probably ages 8 to 15, do three or four games. I don't think I was a very good referee, but I did enjoy it. And there was something I was thinking about in regards to being a good referee. A referee never judges the motive of a player, but only judges whether there is a foul or not. Or let's make it even something more objective. Um, I just touched this for a minute. Um, if the ball is in bounds or out of bounds, that's an objective thing. There is no motive, but a good referee would say, the ball is out of bounds, blow his whistle, tweet, we're going that way. If there is a foul, I'm not looking for it, but if I see it, hey, foul, you blow your whistle, you put your arm up like this, and you say, number 22, hit on the arm, that's a foul, two shots. But I don't, if I don't see it, I'm not judging motives, I'm not judging ambitions, I'm not judging character, but if the ball's out of bounds, I have to blow my whistle and say, that is breaking the rules. And that's what Paul is doing in chapter 5. He's not judging motives or hidden things. What he is doing is he's saying unrepentant sin needs to be dealt with because it is hurting people and it is hurting the body. So we don't go looking at someone's heart or motives, but what we do say is if someone is living in sin, continual sin, and saying, I'm not wrong, or I'm going to do what I want to do, and I don't care what you think. Well, we don't have fellowship together because we don't believe the same thing. Or they're just doing it because whatever reason, I love you, and I want to see you reconciled because we want to be ministers of reconciliation, so I show you. I blow my whistle. Okay. That's out of bounds. Now, it's interesting if a player would argue and argue, oh, that wasn't out of bounds, that wasn't out of bounds, and you saw it was out of bounds, everyone saw it was out of bounds, and that player's, that wasn't out of bounds, I'm not gonna continue with the game, I'm not wrong, I'm not I'm not going the other way, or in, in the church, I'm not repenting of that, that's not wrong, then you can't play the game. That player has to be removed to come to his senses to realize, no, that is wrong, not a hidden thing, a visible thing that's unrepentant, and the man in 1 Corinthians 5 standing up in his sin, puffed up, not wrong. But no, out of bounds, together, everyone sees it, we love you, you don't want to live out of bounds, you can't score baskets out of bounds, we want to see the right thing for you. So as we look at this, obviously there's things in my life, judging motives and ambitions and secondary truth, that I need to look at God's grace and share it. Now, when there are things in people I love who are believers and are living in unrepentant sin, it is our job to speak into their lives in love and gentleness, to see them reconciled, to see God work. One last point at the end of chapter 5 I want to bring forth because he says, what do I have to do with judging those who are outside, those who aren't in the church? And I find even recently, we are so quick through social media to judge the world. How, how can you do that? I can't believe it. I can't believe you're sinning like that. What is going on? And I ask myself, what do we expect for people who don't have God guiding them? And that's what Paul's saying. 
It's not our job to judge them, but to minister to them, to love them, that they would be changed. I don't need to go tell the world they're wrong. The Holy Spirit will tell the world they're wrong. I need to love. And Paul makes that very clear. You know, like, I'm not called to judge those on the outside. But on the inside, out of love, out of bounds? Yes. But to love, to be with, to share Christ, the solution, is what we're called to do on the outside. And again, we're so easy to do that. We see people who are struggling and they don't have Christ. And we're just, it creates a picture of Christianity that is so unattractive to the people of the world. And that's why non-Christians or people from the world, the number one, one of the number one qualities of Christians that is disliked is they're so judging. They're judging. They're judging. We're not loving. We need to love, show truth in love, but not to judge. That's God's job. In the church, not judging motives, not judging ambitions, but seeing the red flag in our life, if we do, because we're not understanding grace and we need to go back to God and not find our value in pushing others down or secondary truth doing that, but rather living in his grace to give his grace and loving one another inside to reconcile people to truth. The world needs Jesus. What we actually should do is begging God for his mercy, begging him, asking God for forgiveness. Instead of with the world being the police or the referee, we should choose to be the paramedic, willing to pick up the pieces and show them Jesus Christ. I think this is a great message. I really felt convicted in my own heart, not condemnation to look back, but conviction to move forward, to understand that Christ will come and he knows what's inside of someone. I need to deal with my own heart and I need to love people enough together when the ball is way out of bounds and they say it's not, to lovingly challenge them and exhort them. Not the world, that's God's job. I'm called to love the world, but to challenge the people in my life. And we talked about that a couple weeks ago, and I don't necessarily want to rehash that, but I love how Paul puts in perspective all of these things so we can point people to Jesus and see them come to know him. So let's pray. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your love. Teach us and help us. May we not judge the internal things, measure people to a standard that you haven't given. May we see their brokenness as Jesus saw their brokenness. Thank you for the example of Jesus. And Lord, may as well as a body, we be loving enough to help our brothers and sisters if the ball's weighed out of bounds and they're declaring it's not. God, we need your help in these areas. We love you so much. But may you transform our church to be more like you. We pray this in your precious name. Amen. Have a great Sunday. Be blessed. And we will see you in the midweek reminder. Bye-bye.